HIV, human immunodeficiency virus is transmitted mostly from contact from the blood, sexual fluid, breast milk. When an individual comes in direct contact with these, they will get infected by HIV. And also through the syringes used by the HIV patient, particularly the skin which is wounded and the mucous membrane of the body are more prone to the infection. HIV is going to affect the immune system if untreated and causes immune failure. And when immune deficiency occurs, it is called as AIDS. AIDS is a fully blown up disease. That is, it's the last stage of HIV if untreated. AIDS is acquired immune deficiency syndrome. HIV infects CD4 of the T lymphocyte. CD4, also called as T helper cells, they signal and activate other immune cells. So once infected, virus enters the WBC or the macrophages. The GP120 of HIV is the most important. Once it comes in contact with the CD4, or the T helper cells, it undergoes various modification so that it can exactly fit into the CD4 receptor. This fitting also requires the help of CCR5 co-receptor and CXCR4 co-receptor. Once it is fit, it is acts like a lock and key method that is the cd4 cells of a body are the lock and the key is with the hiv so once they are complementary fit now the cxcr4 or the ccr5 tries to drag the hiv gp120 protein within it now the gp120 then pierces into the CD4 cells and the GP120 or the HIV envelope fuses with the CD4 cells. And once inside, the retrovirus, the HIVs are known as the retrovirus because they carry the RNA. So here in, you can see that the fusion has occurred. That is, HIV is having a single-stranded RNA and it is a retrovirus. Once it comes in contact with the CD4, as explained previously, it ejects its single-stranded RNA into the cytoplasm. So the virus injects it into the host cell. Now, these viruses are more smart. These virus carry along with them what is known as reverse transcriptase enzyme. The reverse transcriptase uses RNA template to make HIV DNA. That is, first, a single stranded DNA is formed and then it is converted into double-stranded DNA. As you can see here, this is the viral RNA. It makes use of reverse transcriptase enzyme to convert itself into single-stranded DNA and then into double-stranded DNA. So, once the double-stranded DNA is formed, you know that it is just the opposite of central dogma. As we have already studied that it is the DNA getting converted to mRNA and then to the respective protein. But here in, you see the reverse. It is the single-stranded viral RNA 
and then the DNA, single stranded DNA, and then we have the double stranded DNA of the virus. So we have here now HIV DNA. This DNA gets into the nucleus of the T helper cell, wherein we have the host DNA. Now it leads to the integration, that is, the HIV DNA inserts itself into the host DNA. This happens with the help of an enzyme known as integrase. Integrase is the part and parcel of HIV virus. So it goes and attaches to this double-stranded HIV DNA. And once they enter the nucleus, the integrase make a cut or snips the host DNA. Now the HIV DNA gets integrated into the host DNA. Now it remains there for quite some time as a prophage. So the viral DNA codes for the viral RNA and proteins. So it hijacks the DNA of the host and it commands our DNA to do all what is wanted by the virus. After it completes its pro prophage, the new viral RNA and proteins are released into the cytoplasm. Here, the viral RNA comes in contact with the endoplasmic reticulum, the ribosomes of all the host cells. And they try to synthesize their own protein capsid, whatever is required, such as the integrase or protease enzyme, and so and so forth. Before it forms into a full-fledged HIV virus, certain alteration occurs in the RNA of the virus. That is, all these proteins will be quite big, whichever it has been synthesized. So there is a protease enzyme which snips these unwanted proteins and it makes them short and then they move towards the membrane of the cells. That is your CD4 cells. And from here, it buds off. This is known as budding. New virus particle assemble and splits off from the host cell. Remember, this is happening in only one cell, but our body has many cells and in all the cells, simultaneously, these processes are occurring. And this is the reason why the body for a long time will not show any symptoms of the virus that you can understand by the next PPT. The red curves which are shown here is the HIV particles and the blue is the CD4 cells. The x-axis we have taken the weeks or the years of infection and on the y-axis we have taken the CD4 cell count. So when the, the infection starts, it almost takes three weeks to begin. And then it slowly peaks up. You can see here, during the primary infection, the CD4 cells are actively fighting against the HIV. But at suddenly, you can see that there is a drop in this CD4 cell. This indicates that now the HIV has overtaken the CD4 cells and that is why there is a sharp peak here. This is known as acute HIV syndrome and wide dissemination of virus seeding of lymphoid organs. That is the virus has entered into the CD4 cells and they start to show their true color. Once they have entered you can see that suddenly there is a drop in the virus. This happens so because now 
Your antibodies become active and they fight against the HIV. They produce the antibody against the HIV. That is anti-HIV antibodies are produced. And that is why there is a low peak in the HIV. And this is known as the clinical latency. That is you can see for a long period of time. Okay. That is up to some 10 years. There is actually a low load of HIV and you can see that slowly increasing. Now, in this region, what is happening is, it is my previous explanation that how the virus is hijacking our host DNA and then budding off into a new HIV and spreading throughout the cells. Now, this latency period is very important because clinically the patient do not show any symptoms but when a healthy individuals come in contact with such latent period patient any disaster can occur so later on you can see that there is a constitutional symptoms and finally opportunistic diseases that is this is the region where the HIV is now known as AIDS. That is, it is completely hijacked a body or every cells and we are prone to many other diseases such as the pneumonia and tuberculosis and also cancer like Carposis sarcoma and ultimately leading to the death of the individual if untreated. So, when high viral load is there, this is when they transmit to someone else that is in this region. And in the initial stage, the patient can show severe symptoms such as flu, headache, fever, sore throat, joint pain, sometimes swollen glands, fatigue rashes, open sores, sores in the mouth and these are some of the symptoms. Here you can see that there is completely fall in the later on in the immune cells. 